Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. Now today, I wanted to talk about the possible guest characters we can see appear in Mortal Kombat 11. Now I know some of us are quite sceptical with the stance on guest characters, as the whole guest character idea has no doubt in my mind become very oversaturated in the last decade and a half. However, in saying that, there's no denying that some guest characters do deserve to be in particular games. And the Mortal Kombat games is definitely a series that has delivered time and time again, with well executed and essentially fun characters to play, especially when we do come to guest characters. Now with guest characters in Mortal Kombat, you kind of know what to expect. All of them are kind of horror themed, as we've had Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Alien Predator, and Leatherface. So NRS has definitely added a lot of iconic faces from the horror genre in their games. But who else can really make the cut here? Well, let's talk about the one main thing each of these DLC characters actually all share. Their films were in development when they were put in as DLC in the Mortal combat games, which I guess is to no one's surprise if you're a bit more familiar with the practice. You see, a very important thing about guest characters is the idea of cross-promotion. By including a familiar brand in that of your own, you can help bring in an outside audience to have it become your own, which further boosts up the popularity of something on both sides. And if we're talking about this as DLC guest character linguo, then big popular horror character being featured in a well-known fighting game, does that necessarily mean that he's the best fighter in the game because he's the most purchased individual? No. But it does go to show the popularity of that one character, hence why they have featured multiple guest characters across their games, not just the Mortal Kombat franchise. And to further kind of solidify my point with the movies, Alien was put into MKX because of Alien Covenant. Predator was put in because he had his own film in development, one that is in fact coming out later this year. We also had Leatherface who had his own prequel film last year, and Jason was put in because the Friday the 13th series was going to get another installment before it was unfortunately cancelled. But like I said, every single guest character that has featured in X did have a film in the pipeline to happen. So no doubt in my mind that guest characters will always be a thing for these games, as they make a lot of money and help build up some hype for that particular horror character's film. Now also for this video, I kind of will and won't be using previous horror characters that have featured in the Mortal Kombat games. It's a bit of a crazy idea, but I don't want to give it away just yet. Just stick around in the video in order to see what I'm actually talking about here. Now before I do start this list, I just want to say here that what I do say is not solid in stone. Studios can interfere at any point to cancel a film, and sometimes they can just fall apart from the inside due to producers, actors, or directors. There's a lot of factors we have to take into account for a film sometimes not happening at all. So do take some stuff that I do feature here on this list with a grain of salt, because none of this is confirmed, it's ultimately what Warner Brothers wants to capitalise on at the end of the day. Now at the number 4 spot we have Michael Myers. I know some of you might be a bit upset to see that he's kind of low on this list, but he made the cut out of a lot of other horror characters that actually exist, and there's a reason as to why he's kind of low here. The likelihood of this character making it into this game isn't particularly too high, and that's because the next Halloween film isn't coming out next year. It's in fact been pulled to this year, as they finished filming, and it now has a release date of the 19th of October, which in many ways is great for Halloween fans, especially when you think about the failed attempt at a reboot by Rob Zombie. After that kind of fell apart, the franchise has kind of been in a weird sort of void, with many fans kind of believing the Halloween franchise to be dead. Luckily, this doesn't seem to be the case, as the new installment is said to be a true sequel to the first Halloween film, taking place 40 years after the original. So it is very nice to see Halloween fans finally get a film they deserve. And like I mentioned at the very beginning, the reasons as to why he's not higher on this list here is because his film will be released a lot earlier than MK11. For those of you who don't really know the release date of NeverRealm Studio games, they tend to drop around early spring every two years. So there's a bit of a time gap between the two releases, and because of that it doesn't really coincide with their normal kind of cross-promotion deals. But also in saying that, Michael Myers is such an iconic part of horror cinema, it's simply impossible for me to actually leave him off this list, seeing as he hasn't at all featured in a Mortal Kombat game. He in many ways can be seen as the godfather of the slasher films back in the 80s. It was him that helped start off the craze, and the fact that he hasn't actually been featured in a Mortal Kombat game is kind of surprising. So if there's ever been a time for this character to actually appear in a Mortal Kombat game, now would be the best time, as the return of the Halloween franchise would most likely help the sales of Mortal Kombat 11. Now as for what his variations will be, I don't quite know, and it's solely because I'm kind of unfamiliar with the Halloween films themselves, but with the numerous installments the series has had, they no doubt in my mind have a lot of source material they can pull from, and even take already existing assets from previous existing horror characters. So Michael Myers definitely is a 
character I would like to see in game, but whether or not he actually turns up in it is something we have to wait and see. Keep your fingers crossed, Halloween fans. Now, at the number three spot, I have someone that might shock a few of you, and that is the possible inclusion of Spawn. Yes, I know this might be a bit of a surprise, as I happen to have mentioned horror characters at the very beginning, but Spawn is a superhero, right? Well, allow me to explain. Spawn right now is kind of undergoing a drastic change of how he's kind of being portrayed in the comics and in film form. Yes, you heard that right, film form. The Spawn film that Todd McFarlane has been writing for about a decade and a half has finally been greenlit. Being picked up by Blumhouse Productions, it finally looks like Spawn will have another film in the works. But what does that exactly have to do with him being a horror character? Well, Todd McFarlane has stated multiple times that he doesn't want to make a normal kind of superhero film with Spawn. He wants to go for a dark, gritty and R-rated kind of horror film. He's even hinted that the film might not even be based on Spawn, but take place in the same universe, with possibly Spawn taking a minor role in the film. But one thing that Todd really wanted to do when he actually got this film sorted, was to transition the hero into a horror icon. Plus, actually a few years back, Todd stated that Warner Brothers in fact had the option to use the Spawn license in their games, but did also say in the interview, whilst he was talking about his movie by the way, that he didn't want Spawn to feature in Injustice, as he didn't feel like the game would suit his character, as he was trying to transition and move away from that particular kind of genre. So it is quite evident here that he's clearly trying to transition the individual into something more horror-esque. And whilst in the interview, he also stated that this deal wouldn't last forever, so we can only kind of presume that at this point the deal is kind of done. But what's to say that this can't happen again? Plus, Spawn as a character does fit very well into the aesthetic of the Mortal Kombat universe. Realms where Hell Spawns can openly walk around, revenants that literally have control over realms, and gods that fight demons, Spawn doesn't entirely seem out of place. It seems like more of a world he would thrive in, actually. Plus, with the multiple different Spawns we've in fact seen in the comic books, it gives us a lot of variety with what we can see here. We can see an Al Simmons Spawn, a Medieval Spawn, we could even get a variation that utilises his cape in every move, or use his chains as a way of trapping his opponents. Like I said, there's a lot of options we can pick from here, and Spawn honestly is a very good choice with how popular comic book culture is now these days. With films like Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War, there's no doubt in my mind that this is the comic book age where they will make a lot of money, especially if your background is from comics. So I will say that the likelihood of Spawn making it in is quite high if Todd is able to put together a deal with Warner Brothers. And seeing as it's happened before, it doesn't seem unlikely that it won't happen again. So I will say the chances of Spawn making it into the game are fairly high, especially seeing as they've just started casting members and the film is in production. So we can most likely expect to see that film come out next year. Now at the second spot, we have The Terminator, which like the others may surprise a few, but if you actually go watch the first Terminator film, it's more of a sci-fi horror film with the T-800 systematically going around killing multiple Sarah Connors in order to fulfill its mission. He's like a cold-blooded serial killer, traveling from area to area, leaving no survivors. Of course, the sequel Terminator 2 does deviate from this, becoming more of a sci-fi action movie, but the roots of the Terminator are dug in horror, which is why I'm kind of featuring him here. Now, the Terminator series in the last decade or so has been in kind of a weird, shaky place. As of the Terminator 2, the timeline started to become really complicated, and we were given films that didn't exactly satisfy the fanbase. For example, Terminator 3, which more or less took the piss out of itself, and then there was Salvation and Genesis. So the timeline became more convoluted as they were all going off in their different directions, and all films after Terminator 2 with the Terminator name on it received negative reception from both audiences and reviewers. So the Terminator brand started to become tarnished. So because of this, 20th Century Fox decided to reach out to James Cameron and have him help produce a new Terminator film scheduled to come out late next year. But how exactly does this topic relate to this video? Well, with the Terminator franchise being in such an awkward spot right now, I feel like 20th Century Fox need to do as much as they can to kind of help grow the Terminator brand once again. What they need to do is branch out and try and re-establish the franchise in pop culture, because as of right now, the Terminator franchise isn't in the best spot. And seeing as the video game industry is making more money than the film industry now, cough cough microtransactions, the right steps would be to put a well-known and established character in a video game. And I feel like the Terminator would fit extremely well into the Mortal Kombat universe, seeing as we do have cyborg ninjas. A Terminator would be a fantastic addition to the series. Plus, there's been multiple different versions over the years, with the T-800, the T-1000, the TX, the T-3000. There's a lot to pick 
pick from here. So I really do hope that the Terminator does make it into Mortal Kombat 11. Terminator 2 is one of my personal favourite films of all time, and it really does sadden me that the franchise has kind of been tarnished over the years. So I think if they start taking the right steps to re-establish the franchise, then the Terminator series will hopefully be back on track soon, especially seeing as the new Terminator film will have Linda Hamilton return, the original actor of Sarah Connor, and of course Arnie too. So the future for the next Terminator film doesn't seem too bleak. Now we're at our final number one spot, and I knew from the second I started this list this guy was going to be number one, because the IT film last year was a massive success. Yes, he's kind of on the thumbnail, there was kind of no doubt that he was going to be here, but the IT film last year smashed box office expectations, doing a lot better than I think a lot of people were expecting. Now making a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean your film is good, but the IT film last year got a lot of positive praise, and I guess in many ways was kind of able to assert Pennywise as the face of horror. Seeing as the horror genre right now has kind of been absent of an actual mascot, so for sure Pennywise has a lot of star power that can help bring in the casual audience to the game. Now the one thing I did love about Pennywise, and this will actually play into my idea here, is his ability to shapeshift and essentially become someone's living nightmare. So that's when I started thinking about guest characters. Now that we have a variation system in the game, and an individual that is known to shapeshift into things that people fear, why not reintroduce some of those old guest characters as variations that Pennywise can transform into. What I'm basically saying here is have Pennywise function very similar to that of Tribal, where it's one base body that has the ability to transform into different individuals. So you get one Pennywise variation, Freddy Krueger variation, and one let's say Jason variation. Because let's face it, people really wanted to see Freddy vs Jason in a Mortal Kombat game, seeing as we could pit the alien against the predator. So by there being variations, they could condense down their red existing move set into their arsenal, and really kind of give Pennywise a bit of a facelift here, in the sense that he'll literally be able to shapeshift into other characters. Of course that is just an idea, but I feel like that's one that fans would like, and on top of that Pennywise has a lot of draw right now as a character, so I feel like fans would win on both sides. But yes, that does more or less wrap it up for this video, as I've had this in the pipeline for like two weeks, and I have been kind of plotting this out as it's gone along. Of course I've been very lucky, as news dropped about the next Terminator film and the date of the next Halloween film, so it is quite lucky that I didn't make this video straight away. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed it, I know for the most part this hasn't been character origin driven, but there's a lot of decisions that go on behind closed doors with like guest characters, and the main reason as to why they're kind of put in here. For the most part it's cross promotion, and the amount of pull and popularity they kind of get, because that helps bring in more of the casual audience too. So I do apologise if it's felt a little bit oversaturated and very movie-esque, but I had to take it in this direction direction because that's how publishers look at guest characters. There's a lot of money but there's also a lot of benefits and ways they can please the fans. So this is definitely one of many ways they can actually do it. But yeah, that is kind of it for this video guys. I do hope you enjoy it and you know what, down in the comments below, let me know what other horror guest characters you would like to see in Mortal Kombat 11. As I've put some interesting ideas out here on the table, but I'd like to hear what all of you have to say and how you kind of expand on what I already have here. But yeah, that does wrap it up for this video guys. Now before I do finish up, I just want to remind you all that I'm currently streaming God of War on my Twitch channel, so if you aren't doing anything tomorrow, feel free to head over there and check out the stream. I really would appreciate it as I do want to get partnered and kind of branch out a little bit more, so link for it will be in the description. Now before this video does wrap up guys, if possible let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell, so by giving it a thumbs up it helps out a ton. And if you want to go that extra step, we also have a Patreon set up, and a link for it will be down in the description below. Anyway guys, as always please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.